All right, this video is going to cover some um, the topic of consumer credit. So we'll look at um, how to determine interest, payments, and costs for installment loans. All right, the objective on uh, dealing with revolving loans, we're actually not going to do, but I included the notes and the worked out problems for that in case you are interested because you do um, actually deal with that quite a bit. All right, so we're going to be focused on the installment loans, the first part. But consumer credit, it's like a loan, um, and it's it's a loan that you get when you're trying to buy, uh, purchase things like cars or appliances or furniture. You know, very few of us can just go out and pay cash for our car or for, you know, living room furniture or for, uh, a, you know, a refrigerator. So we usually buy it on and we take out an installment loan is what it's called. All right. So that's what we're really going to spend the most time doing is dealing with installment, an installment loan, which is closed end credit, meaning we know how much we're borrowing because we're borrowing a set amount up front and then we're going to just pay it off in equal installments, usually monthly until the loan is completely paid off. Okay. So cars, furniture, and appliances typically work this way. All right, the installment loans are set up that are set up under this concept are based on what they call add-on interest. Okay, so the interest is calculated just using the formula we just had in section 13.1, and then that interest amount is added on to the, the amount we're borrowing and that'll tell us how much we have to uh, repay. And then what we do is we take that and can calculate how much we want to pay each time period, whatever we agree on with the person we're buying the car, the furniture, or the appliances from. So like cars, a lot of times when you buy a car, you'll finance it and you'll take that amount that you financed you'll calculate your interest using the simple interest formula and add it back to the cost of the car. And then you'll have like a length of time, you know, that, uh, that you'll uh, take to pay that loan off. A lot of times it's five years. And so you figure out how much you need to pay each month for those five years. And it'll be that set amount every single month. Okay. So we want to learn how to do this type of thing. All right, so it still uses the same concept. P is the amount borrowed. Okay, so that'll be like the price of the item. And then if there were any taxes or fees, you would add that to it. And then if you didn't, you know, you may not finance the entire car. You may put some money down. That's called the down payment. And then interest is just charged on the amount that's, that's borrowed. Okay, so the amount to be repaid would be the amount borrowed plus the interest due. And so it turns out to be that same concept. You could take the amount borrowed, okay, and then add to that the interest that you would owe. And that's what that formula we had earlier, we used this in the previous section. That's what that formula would do in one step, okay? Then this debt, this amount that we borrowed is going to be paid in equal periodic installments. And that's usually monthly over a set number of years that you've agreed on okay so you can take the total amount to be repaid and divide it by how many payments you're going to wind up making okay so like this part right here can sometimes be tricky for people so like if you're gonna if your car loan is for five years and you're going to be making monthly payments then five years is really five times 12 or 60 months. And so what would happen is you take that, whatever that amount is that you're, you've got to repay and you would divide it by 60. And that would tell you how much you have to pay every one of those 60 months. All right. So we're going to work through a problem here. Okay. In this problem, we have that Zach is, is buying $2,800 worth of furniture. Okay. And he's going to put $400 down, which means he pays that right now. And then he's going to pay the balance, 
which would be the remaining amount at 6% add on interest for two years. So paying 6% simple interest, and he's going to do that for two years. So there's several things we're trying to find here. So we want to find how much he financed. So the furniture was 2,800, but he's going to pay $400 up front. So that means he's not going to finance the whole 2,800. He's going to only finance $2,400. Okay, so that's the amount financed. All right. Then if we want to calculate the total amount to re be repaid, we could use this formula, okay, and do it in one step where we put in the amount that we're borrowing, okay, that, that's going to be financed, we, and then we plug in the interest rate, which is 6%, and we plug in how many years we're going to take to pay it back. And we can do that in one step or like before, you could calculate the interest using the PRT and then just adding add it back to the principal. So you can use this formula directly or you can calculate the principal, I mean, calculate the interest, the PRT, and then add it back to the principal. You can do it in two steps instead of one. So when you do that, you find out that the total amount that he would have to repay would be $2,688. So that would encompass the $2,400 that he had here, the $2,400 that he financed, and also a little extra, that little extra amount, because he didn't pay everything off up front. And that would be the interest that's on that. Okay. Now, to determine the monthly payment, what we need to think about is how he's going to pay this off in two years paying the same amount every month. So we have to calculate how many months that is. We're going to take the two years and multiply by 12 and get 24 months. So then what we'll do is we'll take the 2688, the $2,688, and we'll divide it into 24 equal payments. Okay. And this turns out to be, um, I think it's exact, hundred and twelve dollars okay so every month we'll pay hundred and twelve dollars and then after 24 months we'll have paid off this amount right here okay this total amount which includes the amount financed and the interest that we had to pay now one final question that comes up is what's the total cost of the furniture including the interest There's two ways you can think about that. The furniture was $2,800. Okay. So one thing you could do there would be to add the extra interest that you paid. Okay. So we never really just calculated that, but the interest would have been the difference between these two, or it would have been the the 2,800, we could have taken the, I mean, the 2,400, excuse me, and multiplied it. We could have done the 2,400 times the 0 0.06 times the 2, and that would have given us the um, $288, okay, which would have been the interest. So one thing you could do is take the 2,800 and the 288 and get your 3,088. Think of it that way. But others, it, you might think about it this way. This 2688 is the amount you have to repay. So it's the 2400 plus the interest. What's missing from that is the down payment. You put 400 down. So the furniture, total cost of the furniture wasn't just 2800. It wasn't just 2688. It was really 3088. Okay. And I wanted you to see both of these approaches because some people think about it. Well, you know, they see the furniture was 2,800 and then all they need to add to that is the interest they had to pay. Or some people see, well, here's how much I have to repay, but I need to also remember that I put $400 down in the beginning, okay? So the answer to D would be 3,088. 
All right. And then if you, we're going to work some more problems, but what you see next would be, um, oops. Oh, I, I, I didn't realize I had moved those problems to this area. Um, so I'm going to stop the video and then work some more problems in a minute. Okay.